Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Monday, February 22nd, and the United States has now crossed 500,000 lives lost to COVID-19. So I'll have more on that, as well as what's happening at a state level and all the stories you need to know to get in the loop tonight. But first, let's get a check on our weather. Here's where we're going tonight. The low temperatures will be right near 32, and that's where the temperature is now, so it should remain steady overnight. Tomorrow's going to be a warm and breezy day. Current temperatures uh, that are reporting in, at least, are right around the freezing mark. The wind is coming in out of the west-southwest, and it's going to stay breezy. It's breezy now. It'll be breezy overnight tomorrow, Wednesday as well. And what we've added now to our first alert hour by hour forecast map, these little arrows are the wind direction and wind speed. You'll see it's going to be breezy to start the day tomorrow and with a wind out of the near due west at 10 to 20 miles per hour. I wouldn't call it a windy day, but much like a good portion of this afternoon, it's just going to be breezy. And have you noticed things getting more pricey at the pump? Well, you're not alone. Drivers are filling up their tanks to some of the most expensive gas prices seen in over a year, according to AAA. Because of the forced shutdown of Gulf Coast and some Midwest refineries from last week's big dump of snowfall, gasoline stocks have tightened and gas prices have skyrocketed. Last week, 66% of state averages spiked by double digits, driving the national average up by 13 cents to $2.63. That is the most expensive national average since October of 2019. And Ohio is feeling the brunt of that. AAA has us at the top of their list of the nation's highest weekly increase in gas prices, coming in at a 22 cent jump. And gas prices are likely to stay volatile until crude production is back to normal levels. So us drivers can expect these more expensive prices to stick around. But the good news is those large spikes are likely to subside. And we got another coronavirus update from Ohio Governor Mike DeWine today with a sneak peek at what we can expect come spring. Now, the governor said a bigger and probably more detailed announcement is coming on Thursday, but he did say baseball stadiums will likely be allowing fans at 30% capacity this spring. Now, that comes with some rules, of course. That is only if they are able to keep people properly distanced and masked. So DeWine thinks 30% is a good place to start with these outdoor events as we see masks and distancing working in our schools and there is more confidence as more people get vaccinated. There is concern, however, about those pesky variants that keep popping up across the country and right here in Ohio. Experts say they believe one of the more contagious variants will likely become the more dominant strain in the state by the end of March. But health experts also believe the vaccine is still effective in fighting these strains, and we are finally starting to get a look at what the next phase of vaccination could look like here in the state. Now, to be clear, we are going to stay in the current phase for a few weeks as the state works to get more of our 65 plus population vaccinated. But after that, DeWine said the age limit will eventually drop to 60, then to 55, and then to 50. There will likely be other people included with these age groups based on their jobs and likelihood of exposure, but those specifics haven't been announced, so we'll keep you updated on that. Now let's talk briefly about nursing homes. DeWine said he was sending a letter today to nursing homes in the state, reminding them of two things, that they need to check their county's positivity rate each week to determine their visitation status, and that they need to make sure they're allowing compassionate care visits. So first, according to federal guidelines, in order for a nursing home to allow visitation, the positivity rate in their county has to be less than 10%. And as the positivity rate across the state keeps dropping, this means more nursing homes will be able to allow visitation. But under federal guidelines, even if a nursing home isn't able to allow visitation, compassionate care visits are always allowed. So what is compassionate care visitation? Well, DeWine described them as special visits in which a family member or other close friend provides comfort and assistance to residents whose well-being is suffering or at risk. So compassionate care visits are not just for end-of-life situations. So examples of when a compassionate care visit would be necessary are if a resident's dementia has progressed, if they're grieving after the loss of a close friend or a family member, Member, if their family notices during window visitation a difference in appearance, grooming, or cognitive ability, or a whole host of other scenarios. DeWine said that he's heard that some people have been denied compassionate care visitation, despite it being necessary. So if you feel your loved one isn't being properly cared for and you're being denied a compassionate care visit, you can call 1-800-282-1206.
And this evening, President Joe Biden marked the U.S. crossing 500,000 lives lost to COVID-19 with a moment of silence and a candle lighting ceremony at the White House. The nation passed that grim milestone today, just over a year after the first confirmed U.S. fatality due to the novel coronavirus. Biden spoke at sunset, so just around 6 p.m. to honor those who lost their lives. He's made a point of recognizing the lives lost from the virus. His first event upon arriving in Washington for his inauguration a month ago was to deliver remarks at a COVID-19 memorial ceremony. For most people, the new coronavirus causes mild or moderate symptoms. For some, especially older adults and people with existing health problems, it can cause more severe illnesses, including pneumonia and death. As of this morning, the U.S. had more than 28 million confirmed cases of the virus, according to data from Johns Hopkins University. Worldwide, there are more than 11 million confirmed cases with more than 2.4 million deaths. But before I go, let's look at something a bit more positive and maybe even inspiring for some people. NASA today released first of its kind footage of the newest rover landing on Mars and has captured sound on the red planet for the first time ever. A record 25 cameras were placed on the Perseverance rover and the spacecraft which brought it down to the surface of the red planet last Thursday. Several of those cameras were turned on during the landing. While the rover sent back some photos from the surface last week, this footage NASA shared today took it to the next level. The cameras captured shots of the rover's descent through the atmosphere, the parachute deployment, and the sky crane maneuver that finally lowered it to the surface. Officials said around 23,000 images captured the rover's descent and landing. The rover was also equipped with two microphones, and they were not able to capture sound during the landing, but officials did share audio from the surface, which according to NASA, were the first sounds ever recorded from the surface of Mars. Just take a listen. Kind of eerie, isn't it? But that is all I have for you today. If you liked this video, hit that like button and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.